Good evening, welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Again, thank you for the gift of your presence. We welcome not only you, but those who will be watching online as well. Thank you for following the protocols here by wearing your mask and keeping the social distancing. And I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing our gathering hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we now light the first and second candles of our wreath, an outward sign of our inward preparation to be reborn in Christ. May the light of this wreath reflect the splendor of Christ and inspire us to follow him anew, who is Lord forever and ever. Lord God, Moved by the light of your Christ, we now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament, strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country, a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto 
a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings, cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news, fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be 
conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel, according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Of course, that term repentance is metanoia, the Greek word, meaning to see things anew. And we are called to see things anew as disciples of Jesus, as people of the kingdom of God. When, when a person builds a house, uh, the preparation of the site is critical. Without the proper site preparation, the building will shift, might lean, could sink, might even collapse. And we know that's true with the parking lot as well. But anyway, uh, spiritual sight preparation is what John the Baptist is challenging us to do. Christmas time evokes strong hopes and dreams in our lives, thoughts of family and friendship. We look to a world of peace and harmony where people care about each other or at least respect with each other and live within their dignity as people of God as children of God. 
We dream of building great spiritual structures in our life. It could be a strong marriage, trusted friendships, a family living in harmony, a dynamic spirituality, and the experience of God's grace, Jesus' grace and purpose in our own lives. That's a great thing to dream about. It's a great thing to desire. But the question on the table remains, are we willing to do the site preparation for that to happen? Because it's not just going to happen by us wishing it to happen. Are we willing to acknowledge and address the obstacles in our lives that may be keeping us from a deeper relationship with God? from a deeper relationship with others? What are we willing to give up in our own lives, in our own desires, to develop a solid spiritual foundation in our lives? You know, one thing that I've missed since this pandemic back in March is that we're unable to celebrate baptisms at Mass. I don't know if you've noticed that, right? And... Uh, We've been celebrating them privately. And I think we as a parish community are impoverished because of this. Because each baptism is a reminder of who we are and whose kingdom we belong to. We need to be reminded of that. And every time we celebrate, Baptism, we renew our baptismal promises. In the ancient ritual of baptism, and it's still present in a less, you know, in a, in a not as significant of a way, but it's still present there. We begin, you know, the, the beginning of the ritual, towards the beginning at least, we begin by renouncing Satan. And in the old... In the early church, you know, centuries ago, the ancient adult person during that time would face the West and they would have their hands in the air. And they were facing the West because it signified darkness, right? The setting sun. And the priest would ask the person three times, do you renounce Satan? And they would say, I do. Three times. And then the priest would tell the person, breathe on him and spit upon him. Giving up your old ways. I'm not going to be ruled by the way of Satan, the way of the world. I'm not taking that path. And then they would turn. And then they'd face the east. Again, the light, the rising sun. And with arms down, in a posture of receptivity, they would be asked three times, have you united yourself to Christ? And they would say, I have, I have, I have. Do you believe in him? And they would respond, I believe in him as my king and my God. Okay person to be baptized is now a member of God's kingdom. That shifts everything. Okay? When we move out of that space, that shifts the way in which we look at the world, it shifts the way we experience the world, it shifts the way we act in the world. The baptized believer is to live out of that reality and that truth. In fact, all of us, as committed Catholics, as baptized believers, as disciples of Jesus, are called to live out of that reality. And we're reminded of that each time we are present at a baptism. We all have some work to do in this arena. So in the middle of this crowded season... Let us make room in our lives for John the Baptist and his message of repentance 
because it keeps it real for us. It keeps us real. He keeps us grounded in reality. He reminds us that we can change. He invites us once again this year in this crowded, hectic Christmas season to take away a couple of those stones or boulders that block the flow of grace in our lives. He prepares us not for the temporary seasonal cheer, but really he prepares us for the deep joy of knowing the Lord and living in his presence and living in his truth. John the Baptist's message of repentance prepares us now for the coming of the Lord and consequently for a new future. And if we embrace his message, Christmas will not be just another holiday season, but truly a season of healing as well as of grace. Together as God's people, let us now stand as we profess our common faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this time of preparation and anticipation for the coming of God's kingdom in its fullness, let us now come before the Lord bringing our needs and the needs of our world. For the church, may God comfort, nurture, and care for us, and lead us to a new day that is free of the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may God ease the tensions between and within nations, opening new paths for communication and the resolution of disputes, so they may work together to promote peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the upcoming Diocesan Synod on Family, may we answer the call to build up the body of Christ, the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may the young people of our parish respond to the invitation given them to prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may God renew the gift of the Spirit within us and help us to be active and dynamic disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Reed Hagen, Vern Boyer, Mick Johnson, Paul Lacey, Jack Payton, Don Brokop, Pat Byorth, Audrey Parks, and Peggy Newcomb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish family, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Reuben Day and Cecilia Messer, May the Good Shepherd gather them into the peace and joy of God's presence forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, whose word is comfort and whose promise is a new creation, prepare the way in the wilderness of our world. Open our eyes to the one who comes into our midst, that by lives of holiness and service, we may hasten the coming of that day and be found at peace when at last it dawns. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is Come Emmanuel.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is Taste and See.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. A few announcements. Um, Happy birthday to all of you born during the month of December. If you don't see your name listed on our bulletin insert this weekend, call Teresa at the church office. We'll update your parish records. Um, Another insert this weekend is for the Advent Parish Endowment Information Flyer. Check that out. Some excellent options for end of the year giving to your parish. That will certainly help the parish for many years to come, as well as help you on your state taxes. Okay. Welcome to the 13 families who joined us during the month of November. Jeff and Jacqueline Aders, Don and Natalie Knudsen, Michael and Alyssa Miller and their children, Saxton and Cora, ages 9 and 6, Donna Mann, Kevin and Amy Johnson, or Kevin and Amy Jackson, Tim Ellis, Claire Gannon, Josie Kautsky, Michael and Victoria Casau and their son James, two and a half months, Tyler and Nikki Houston and their twins, Jada and Kenna, eight years old, Chuck Harvey, Suzanne Crawford, Sammy Duvall, and Rachel Franzen. So welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. It's good they're still joining us during this pandemic, huh? All right, um, this week, December 6th through the 12th, our parish is sponsoring a blood drive through um, the Knights of Columbus. It's taking place at um, Vitalant, I think it is. Is that how you pronounce that, Dr. Weaver? It must be. Okay, on the corner of Grand and 15th, you can call and schedule any time this week and ask that it be credited to the St. Thomas Parish's blood drive. Thank you for your support of people in that way. Um, Again, thank you for remembering to bring the dry and canned goods as well as the wrapped and tagged gifts by this weekend. You can still sign up to deliver on Sunday, December 20th. We ask that you bring hams on delivery day that Sunday, the 20th. Um, This Tuesday is December 8th, right? Feast of the Immaculate Conception. We will have Mass Monday evening at 7 p.m. for that feast day, as well as Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. And, of course, both services will, at least one of the services will be live-streamed for our website, okay? Also this Tuesday, December 8th, the parish will show the, the movie The Star of Bethlehem, in the St. Benedict Room and after the 9 a.m. Mass, as well as Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Social distancing, masks are required. This one-hour movie is suitable for the whole family, and it's, I hear it's pretty interesting, so you'll want to check that out if you can. I believe that's it. Enjoy this great weather, huh? Winter isn't so bad after all. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing, Ready the Way. Yeah. 